Hey everyone, uh, my name is Justin, I'm J47, and this is... Uh, my name is Hudson, I'm Tommy, and I'm J9. So this workshop presentation is mostly a quick dive into the community operations team, and we're going to try to teach some of the metrics tools that we have available in the Fedora stack. Um, So we'll generally start with a quick introduction to ComOps, and then we'll dive into some of the metrics, and we'll talk about some of our, as we move closer to the end, we'll start doing more of our, our hack session topics that we have planned at the end. Um, so the metric session should be about 90 minutes after this. But just as a, uh, and then with that, the latter part will also be like a hack session for some of our tickets that we have too. Um, so as a quick introduction for ComOps, what is, what is community operations? What is, what is the ComOps team? So ComOps first came up around November 2015, and it was part of this idea that the Fedora project is huge, and there's so many different corners of the project that it's almost impossible to keep up with all of it at once. There's so many different things happening in the development side and the design team with the ambassadors. It's almost impossible for any one person to know what's happening in Fedora at once. So part of the vision for the community operations team was to bring heat and light to these different areas of the Fedora project. Um, so it's kind of, if you can think of as marketing as kind of this outreach, community operations is maybe a little bit more like in reach. Um, so some of the things that we help work on is like the community blog, which is the platform that we use to help deliver Fedora new, or news for Fedora contributors across the project. You can go there and you can see different blog posts that have been written by different contributors across the project. Uh, we also work with a lot of the metrics and data tools. Uh, I think this year we also had some, we've had some GSOC or Google Summer of Code slots in the past to work on some of these tools as well as some other projects as well. Um, but we kind of do like a, like a mix. There's two different sides to the community operations team, one of which is more of working with the uh, the, quant or the quantitative tools, like the metric stack, like FedMessage, DataGrepper, and some of the others, and Sachin is more informed on those things than me. Uh, and then on the other side, it's also a little bit more non-technical. So we look at some of the other things going on in the community. Um, one of the, the current tasks that we're working on that we have or planned for a little bit later, um, we have this ticket for a Fedora Appreciation Day, which does kind of take a, uh, it was partially motivated by what Ubuntu has. They have a Ubuntu Community Appreciation Day, which is a really simple idea that one day a year, uh, everyone's encouraged to say thank you to each other in the, in, the, in the contributor community and thank people for their work in the, in the project. Um, if you ever heard of the site Happiness Packets, it's kind of a similar idea of just taking some time to say thank you to all the people who are putting their time into the project. So towards the end, we'll go a little bit more into that. Um, but now I think you want to talk a little bit more about the metric side? All right, uh, so one of the major part of ComOps is uh, what we do, we, we do a lot of metrics. So uh, when you say it's metrics, we, uh, you know, it, it can be even metrics, it can be badges metrics, it can be you know, reports of annual reports of various teams, uh, and a lot of stuff like that. So uh, we have uh, something cool, we have something called the ComOps toolbox. So this is, this is a part of the wiki where we have a list of awesome tools. Uh, I'll just go there. Yeah, so uh, this is our toolbox. So we have uh, things like we have the uh, we have ircbot.py that that pulls data about uh, messages from IRC. Uh, we have a annual gripper tool which gives you uh, yearly statistics. Uh, there is data gripper that we use uh, to pull uh, data from uh, from from HTTP server. Uh, Fat message is, is our central messaging hub that that you know ho holds all the messages and. And this is a tool uh, I was working on for my previous GSOC. So what this tool does is uh, it'll take uh, you know a list of usernames and it can pull uh, data about it and about about that person. And you can generate uh, statistics like the ones you saw during the keynote presentation. Uh, then there is uh, StatsCache, which is a tool that that is built to you know uh, have data cached locally so you can have faster transactions. And then uh, this is one awesome tool that was built by Remy. Uh, so what it does is it, it can uh, take meeting logs and it can build you know beautiful word clouds. 
Yeah, so uh, these are some tools we use. Okay, uh, so uh, Metrics 101. So if, you, if, if you're interested in building any, uh, any metrics tool for Fedora or if you want to generate uh, some people's data, you, uh, you will want to start with Data Gripper. So, uh, What? Yeah, so uh, this is Data Gripper. Uh, so this is this is the one tool we have, which is used to, you know, pull data about people. So if you uh, so the link is apps.fedoraproject.org slash data gripper. So what uh, you can do is you can uh, you have a uh, you know specific set of get requests you can make, and uh, you'll get uh, JSON responses or HTTP responses based on what you ask for. So let's say I want. And this is a quick clarification for the video too. This is all pulling message from or data from Fed Message. If you're not familiar with Fed Message, this is like the federated message bus of everything happening in the project. You can almost think of this as almost like a raw fire hose of data of everything happening in Fedora all at once. So this is things like someone got a badge, someone made a uh, commit to a Pajur repo, someone submitted a, a Koji build, someone wrote a blog post for the Fedora magazine, or submitted something to the Fedora planet. There's all these different kinds of things that are emitted onto this bus of things that are happening in the Fedora project. One thing I think is really cool just to see, on Freenode there's a channel Fedora-Fed message, and you can just see everything coming out all at once. It's by itself, it's impossible to make sense of because it's just so much data. You have just lines flying across your screen. But once you can use a tool like, yeah, actually like this. So by itself, this is impossible to make sense of. But you can kind of get this idea of these are all things that are happening in Fedora right now. And this is like the live feed. Like you're seeing Fedora move and happen right now in front of you. And it's when you start using tools like Data Grepper that you can take this this raw fire hose and start filtering it down into meaningful, impactful conclusions and you can start forming it to actually work with it and start manipulating it to ways you want to work with it. No, so this is all tied to Fedora user accounts or for the Fedora account system. So like if you go back to the channel really quick. That might, um, I think that would. Like there's also Ansible playbook runs will also go in here. And you can kind of see like most of these, if it's not a bot, there might be like a fast username that will come up. Like Esgalter started a new build on the four testing copper. Um, so like it is mostly tied around like username based data with like uh, with the Fedora account system. But there's also other things too, like you can see a bunch of um, Taskatron results from QA that are coming out right now too. Um, does that answer the question? Cool. So uh, a bit more into it, so what FedMessage does is it has a, a you know, central message hub that listens to all the uh, messages. So we have a lot of web apps, right? So we have Pagur, we have Coper, we have, we have like a lot of Git repos. So what it does is when someone does uh, some kind of an activity in that web app, it, it pushes out a message to Fed message. So uh, we do a subscribe to it and we can pull messages from Fed message. All right, so uh, Data Gripper is this tool that you can use to actually, you know, get historic messages from this. Uh, so what you can do is, uh, so this is the syntax. Uh, I'm not sure if it's visible.
All right, so uh, this is the basic syntax for pulling data of a user. So what it does is you can go to apps.fedorprojectorg slash data gripper slash raw. So you, you want the raw messages, so you go to this URL and you can give your fast username there. All right, so uh, can any one of you give your fast username? I can, I can show you. Sorry? Uh, P -S -J Data grabber, man. <laughs> Not the first one, but the four time ago. <laughs> I mean, it's. It might just be the network connection yeah. on this laptop. Uh, I just refreshed it. It's it's loading. This is basically, if you just wanted to use the, the HTTP API for this, this is an easy way just to see it happen in the browser. Um, and you can also, it's, it's pretty easy to start using this programmatically as well, which is what we use with some of the tools that we have in the Palm Apps Toolbox. Okay, it should be back up in a while. So uh, this is how it works. So uh, if you were wondering how, uh, where I got this data from, there is an awesome reference tab that you have in Data Gripper. No, I mean this is the this is a five hundred. Yeah. I think this this, <laughs> this this might require a restart of data gripper, I guess. That's on a reference tab. <laughs> All right, yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, I wanted to show you the API calls. So these are like a few things you can do. So you have a user, uh, you have a user tab which you can use to get data about the user, and if. And that will give you like all the data the user has. It, it will give you uh, all his meeting logs. It will give you IRC messages. It will it'll do a lot of stuff. So if you, if you want to fine tune, if you want to go uh, deeper into it, so you can uh, do something like, hey, I want uh, only the meeting stuff. So you can do a category is equal to meetbot. And it will give you messages only about the you know, meetbot messages that were generated for that user. So this is like, I want my data, and I want data that no, only, only you know subscribes to the meet board. So if I was in a meeting, it will give my give me all the data which was coming from the meeting board. And this also has uh, you know a really cool uh, thing called delta. So a delta is uh, something you can use you know to fine tune the result even further. So if I have you know if I want data for one week, it would be the timestamp in epoch time. So it would be 24. Uh, into 60, that would that would give you for one day, and this would you know you can just you can just do the math. Yeah. No, it's it's, it's refreshing. Uh, I think uh, those are not uh, caught by data grip uh, data gripper, but you have a channel for it, so it it gives you. It's Fedora, Fedora minus NOC. It gives you messages like, hey, this is down, and the swap values are low. Uh, I don't think this goes to the data gripper, though. You cannot search for this, because yeah, it's, it's a different data gripper.
All right, so uh, this is a sample response you will get from any message. So you'll have uh, arguments. It will show uh, how many pages are there in your uh, response. You have uh, rows per page, how many messages are there on one page. And uh, you'll have things like raw messages. Raw messages are actually the stuff that you know you will require. So category, there'll be certificate that's, that's not required. Uh, and it will it'll have a signature. It will have a timestamp of when this happened. And, and that is something called topic that comes from fed message. So a uh, FET message has this, uh, you know, uh, really good naming convention. So you'll have this. This is going to be, this part is going to be same for uh, almost all the messages. So it is like Fedora project org, and you have this is on production. So if you if it's on staging, it will it will be dot stg, and uh, you'll have stuff like if it's on irc, you'll have org dot fedora project dot prod dot irc, and you'll have whatever comes after that. So if someone gives me, you know, karma. I'll just show you that. Okay. Yeah. Is it working for you? No, I think it's it's a problem with the data to the server itself. All right, so uh, this is the delta I was talking about. You can filter using start time and end time. So if you if you specify a start date, you you can get you know you can get data from that date. And if you specify an end date, you will have like you know a time range where you can get data. So this is what we use for getting data about an event. So let's say I want to gather data about Flock 2017. What I will do is I'll go to the badges project. So uh, this is Justin's profile on badges. Yeah, so we have this badge. So this badge is given to all the people who attend Flock. Uh, so what uh, we'll be doing is we'll be uh, scraping this, this website, and we'll pull all the usernames from there. So let's see, there are, there are these people who have claimed the badge so far. So uh, we'll be pulling all this data, and we'll be taking this and writing a script putting it in data gripper. So it'll be like, uh, I'm going to be pulling data from data gripper for each of these users, and I'll be generating graphs out of it. Sorry? Uh, you can, there's a QR code on your uh, code. Yeah. Yeah, so if you, uh, if you scan that QR, QR code, you'll get this badge. So using uh, these data, I can, you know, maybe pull data. Let's, let's say I was, uh, I, I'll just pull my data from yesterday, or probably for five days, and I'll, I'll, I can figure out what I was doing. So let's say there were uh, Pagur commits, or there were, you know, I was an IRC giving karma to someone, so those people would have done, done something, right? So you can gather a lot of data from that. So I have a few sample reports. All right, so uh, what I did is I pulled data of all the ComOps members for one year. And th so this was pulled by one of the tools I made. I'll, I'll get back to that in a while. So let's say I want data of uh, Justin. I'll, I'll go to his folder. And OK, that's just JSON data right now. Uh, so that won't make much sense, right? So this is going to be an endless list of what he did. And it's, it's going to be a, a list of all the you know, things that are mentioned in JSON. So I want to prettify this. I want, I want to make sense out of this. So what do I do? I write scripts for this. So uh, I, have, I have the weekly data of ComOps, and I have generated right. So I can actually do 
do that by itself. So this is the tool I was talking about. This is the tool I built for my GSOC. So what it does is it, it takes messages from Data Gripper, and uh, you know you can build graphs using it. So how it works is it's a Python script. So you basically go ahead and enter the username you want. So it's going to be an IASINIC. So let's say uh, it's J Flory. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a fast account name. So it's going to be. And just for quick reference, this is in pajure.io slash gsoc dash stats. Stats. It's also in the com ops toolbox that we showed earlier, if you're okay. trying to find so, it. So uh, this takes arguments of username. So this user is going to be, uh, this is the fast username. And I can specify the mode. So if it's mod, it can be JSON, it can be PNG, it can be, uh, it can it can be like most of the image things you you use. So I'll just go with SVG right now, and I'll I'll grab this data for two weeks. So what it does is it it, it initializes a background process for pulling data from Data Gripper. It's it's, it's slow because my Data Gripper is down. So uh, this was built from the JSON I showed you earlier. So uh, you know this takes takes up all the messages. It it passes it into graphs, and you get to see what he was doing. So let's say uh, he was he he has he was working. There were two thousand two hundred and eight messages on Wiki. Uh, he he was tagging the packages. I mean there were he pa tagged three thirty six packages. Uh, this is for uh, last year. <laughs> so uh, he he had 178 messages on GitHub, uh, Mailman, uh, Track. Yeah. So he was working on Pagur for quite some time. He he was an IRC doing something. He was probably giving karma to people. And this is FMN. So you you can even filter out things like if you don't want Wiki, you can just click on it and it'll go off. Yeah, those are category users. Yeah, so uh, topics are basically the entire string. So it's going to be org dot federal project dot org dot something. So that's a topic. So if you want to go into specific categories like IRC dot karma, you can also do that. So it's going to be a subcategory of the category. So it's like IRC is the parent, and it has a lot of styles like IRC karma, like IRC meeting, and stuff like that. I think I also have. That's for that. I mean, if I if I had data gripper up, I could have shown you. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, this is, I, I went into the Pagur stuff, and here you can see how, how what he was working on in Pagur. So he was, he opened a new project, so that was like 22% uh, uh, pull requests. Uh, there were issues, he was working on something on issues, so it might be creating issues, it might be editing it. And this is Git, so this is, maybe he made Git pushes, commits. And there was one pull request, I guess.
yeah, so this is part of so uh, So he had 109 messages. Out of that, he had like 60% where something to deal with issues and stuff. So in this in this example, it used raw percentages, but you would still be able to get the raw numbers out of the out of data grabber for that. Does anyone have any questions so far, or anything they want answered before we keep going? And there's something you can you can also generate markdown reports. So let's say if you want to push your reports to GitHub, you can you can generate a markdown report. So it would look something like this. You can basically uh, see what he was doing. It's on wiki page. Okay, that's a lot. Yeah. So this is the specific things he was doing. So he was like commented on a ticket, he edited the priority, and he tagged tickets. So these are like specific things he was doing. So this is the graphs we show, I have there is a visualization of this. There's also something uh, called the Gauss report. I I don't have it right now, but I was really in database. So, so a Gauss report is something really cool. It's like a live visualization. So if I if I pull data for one year and if I run the Gauss visualization, it would show you uh, it would show you a really cool graph of what's happening and how much messages were there each week and stuff. So uh, I I could have shown that, but let's see if that works in one of the com up servers. Having Thomas point that out, we actually do have a post, uh, a few posts on the Tom blog that actually show some of this. There's a series that we did, um, a three-part series on Gorse. Let me see if I can just pull these up, and I'll show them on my laptop really quick. So uh, GORS, is, it's a visualization for some of the development history. It uses uh, a version control system and it will animate it into act, uh, like animations, like video. Yeah, here we go. So you might have seen something like this before. So GORS is actually taking all of the activity, I guess in this case it's for the Fedora calendaring system. Um, and this is going through all of 2015. Um, and let me see if we can put these links up to the community blog. There's actually a tag. If you want to link, go to, go to this one. Um, 
It's communityblog.fedoraproject.org slash tag slash gorse. Actually, yeah, click, yep, that one. Um, this is, we have this uh, three-part series about, like, called, I contributed, now what? Um, and this, is, this was something that we did about a year ago, which was trying to go deeper into why people contribute to the Fedora project, and it was using GORSE as kind of the tool to make some of those conclusions um, with the data that it was pulling from. Um, could you maybe go and play one of those two that we have? Well, I can't remember what we did in this one. Um, in part one, yeah. Which one was this for? Is the, all, all three of these did different topics in the Fed message bus. Um, I just can't remember which ones are which. So this was, I think, was this, oh, is this all of Fed message for 20? So yeah, this is all of Fedora in 2015 <laughs> for everything. IRC, uh, Pajure, Track. Um, this is kind of like a, a cool way to get a visualization out of it. And um, in, in this case, the, the series that's on the com blog actually does try to make sense of what the, all this is. It's not just a, I mean, it's kind of cool to watch anyways, but um, there actually are some ways that you can use this to try to do, I mean, you can kind of see a visualization too, like all these hot pockets of where all this attention and where a lot of activity is in Fedora. And you can also kind of see too, there's a lot of areas that probably aren't going to be well represented there. Like for example, the ambassadors are, like the, de uh, the development side of Fedora is obviously getting, you can see some of the hot pockets with like the track and Fajur repos. Um, but on the other side, you also would probably see like a lot of, uh, either if they're smaller areas, it might be like a, a event report, but there's things that aren't well represented in the Fed message bus as well. And that's something that is, we're, we're, we're trying to think more about and try to find ways to get that, get ways to represent that activity into the Fed message bus. Uh, but it is a little more challenging because it is more soft, soft kind of activity. It's not something you can track with git, git push, pull request, meeting end, meeting start. Um, so. It is kind of a nice way to see that too. Um, in this case, part three, and this was from part three, this was the aggregate, um, which, yeah, and so if you look at all the blog posts here, you can see activity from Fedora elections, the infrastructure Git repos, kernel regression testing, IRC karma, and the Fedora calendar as well. Um, which is also nice if, you're, if you have your own project that's in Fajur, and if you want to build visualizations like this, you can actually create these. So the tool that's used to make these is actually called Fed Message to Gorse. Um, can you pull that, that repo up really quick too? Um, and this is a tool that you can actually use to take data from Fed Message, manipulate it with Data Grepper, if I'm right. Um, and then you can actually, yeah, uh, I guess it's on, on Ralph's GitHub. Um, we should probably move that to Pajure now that I think about it. Um, but this is a tool you can use. Uh, you just use Image Magic, Fed Message, of course, uh, and some of the Fedora infrastructure packaging for Fed Message. Uh, you can choose just like you were, we were doing earlier with Data Grepper. You can see that you just run it as a Python script. You use the amount of days that you want to use, uh, and then you can also filter it down with some of the different topics or categories in Pajure as well. Yeah, so there are two things you can do with this. You can either use this as a standalone tool uh, to generate data from Fed message, or you can integrate it with your own program. So let's say uh, I wrote my scripts, and my scripts was initially just PNGs and SVGs. So I wanted to extend that, so I used this. So I used this as a Python wrapper, and I integrated this code into my code base. So uh, this code is available, and this also has a Python API, so you can just Go ahead and include that in your, your own code base and you, you can generate beautiful Gauss graphs out of it. Right, so uh, I, I'll give you a quick walkthrough of what uh, I've been doing.
I'll just go to the hell if it's safe. So uh, for this tool, I actually took some time to uh, you know add a help menu to it. So uh, what you can do is you can do a lot of stuff with this. So uh, the thing is, this requires a mandatory username. So that's kind of obvious. So if you want to uh, you know pull data of a specific user, let's say uh, I want to pull data of Justin, I'll just specify minus u or minus minus user, and I'll give the first username. And let's say if you want to pu pull all the data for a category, so you will be mentioning minus u all. So that's like all the usernames. And there's something called category you can use that is like IRC or Pagur or, or whichever category you want to pull data from. And then there is start date and end date, which you can use. That, that's going to directly go to fat message and going to pull data for only that amount of time. And uh, there's going to be a group statistics. So what this is going to be helpful is, let's say, if you want to generate a report for the Fedora Council meeting, you can just go ahead and run this tool and, and gather your data for an year, and you can you know, generate graphs out of it, and for the report, you can say, hey, we did this, we had so many messages in Pagur, and we, we did so, so we did closed out so many tickets and stuff. And then uh, there's a logging mode uh, where you can dump the JSON, so if you, if you want to write any other specific metric tools, you can go ahead and do that using the log, uh, the log method. And mode is the type of output. So uh, let's say if you, you want it in SVG, so you'll just type minus M SVG, and if you want it in PNG, you'll just do minus M and PNG, and it's going to be uh, there are going to be weeks, so you can uh, specify minus minus weeks or minus W. So you, if you want to pull data for like three weeks or four weeks, you can just go ahead and specify, hey, I want data for only four weeks. So this is going to give you data for four weeks. And there's also this mode called interactive mode. So if you run this tool with minus i, it's going to pop up asking like, hey, what's the username you want to pull data for? So I'll just type in my username and it's like, uh, is there a specific length for which you want data? So it's like you can specify number of weeks, so you can specify a date. So you don't have to like script it, so it'll, it will do all the hard work for you. It will prompt you to enter stuff, and yeah. Is it still down? This is a really bad time for data grapher to be down. Yeah. All right, so uh, I talk about all the nice things data gripper can do, but there are some limitations of data gripper. So the first thing is it's not very reliable, as you can see right now. So you will need some kind of a local stash that you will, you know, you will need to store all the data. So let's say I want to generate this data, you know, like maybe after two years or maybe after three years, I'll have to pull all the data again. So uh, we came up with, uh, so the, in Fedora Infra Repo, we have something called uh, stats cache. Oh, it's. Oh. Yeah, so uh, this is a tool that works with uh, Data Gripper. So this is going to pull data from Data Gripper and it's going to store in local database. So, so this is going to be a one-time process. So if you pull data once, you can pull data from 2013 to 16, and you can store it locally. So the next time you want to you know, uh, generate data for a user, you don't have to go to Data Gripper and pull data. You can just directly communicate with StatsCache, and you can you know, like, uh, build dashboards out of this. So uh, this is, I don't think this is like quite not maintained. So uh, you know, Bex found out this really cool tool called Percival. So uh, that is by Bitergia team. So I was going through that. So that, that looks like 
quite interesting. Yeah, so this is the tool I'm talking about. So what this does is, uh, this integrates with a lot of services. So we have, we have an instance of HyperKitty running, we have uh, Git, we have a lot of Git repos. So instead of you know, uh, doing a, a Git request for all the things, what we can do is we can uh, build a fet message wrapper around this tool, and this, this run, basically runs on the Elk stack. So it's Elastic, stack, Elastic Search, Logstash, and Kibana. So uh, Elasticsearch is, is the place where you dump all the data. Uh, Logstash is the one that prettifies the data, and Kibana is the dashboard. So what uh, I have set this up. I, I'll give you a quick demo. All right, so uh, this is a sample uh, code for getting data from HyperKitty. So HyperKitty is, is the, your front end for uh, the mailing lists. So what you can do is you can uh, specify the URL of the HyperKitty here. So it's like I'm pulling data for Fedora Join. And then you can uh, you know, mention where you want to archive it. So I'm going to store it in some place called archives. Uh, and then you can, uh, you can specify a date time here from where you want the messages. So it's going to be like from message in report at fetch. I'm going to fetch all the data from, uh, from our archives from 2014. So when I do that, it's, it's going to store everything in something called inbox format. So this is, this is going to be archives of you know, uh, all the mails from 2014 to 2017. And then uh, there's something called a uh, mailbox plugin. Yeah, so what this does is it, it kind of parses whatever is in mailbox, and it will give you data out of it. So uh, this, th this is actually a JSON format, so this is going to print uh, Let's say the raw JSON. So if you want stuff from that, let's let's see what are what are the stuff in there. have a problem with print so it is used now no? Wait. one thing that I think is just worth clarifying too about we're showing you all these like these really cool visualizations and data and it's all there and it's there for you to work with and access but then it's kind of like so what it's here you can see it what's the point of having all this data what can you actually do with it what can you use it for there's kind of this, one of the things with ComOps is uh, one of our kind of the, the motivations that we have is this idea of storytelling. And when you look at a project like Fedora, you have all of these different corners that are all doing their own thing. But at the same time, we're still part of this bigger project. And when you can see and understand what's happening in your community, in your project, it makes it a lot different when you're thinking like, I don't really know what's happening over here. I don't know what's happening in this place. When you can take this data, make sense out of it, and make interpretations, make conclusions about, uh, like what we did, there was a talk at last year's Flock that went into like, uh, it was like a uh, analysis of the lifespan of a contributor. And in this case, we actually saw that in the year, in 2016, of the people that entered the Fedora project, uh, a majority of the people that entered Fedora only stayed in the project for three months. The majority of that. Some of them would continue contributing. Others were active for 
for less than three months, but a majority of them were active in the community for three months. And by using these tools, we were able to see that. We would never have been able to know or understand, like, oh, hey, people started dropping off, like they attended less meetings, and then there was this, this drop off towards the end where they stopped contributing to the project. Um, and in this case, if you have your own project in Fedora or you have something that's in the Fed message bus, you can actually use this data to try to make interpretations and conclusions about things happening right in your own, in your own part of the project too. Um, and when you can take this and actually make sensible interpretations and conclusions, it lets you, the project maintainer or part of a community team, actually have a better understanding of what's happening and find ways you can improve on how you engage with people in your project. Like for example, um, like the design team. If you have some of these data or some of these tools, you can better understand maybe weak points in maybe your onboarding process. Or maybe there's a point where you see people get started like with Fedora badges and then they drop off after a point. Well, what was that blocker? When you know that that's the point where people drop off, then you can dive deeper and you can understand, like, oh, this is what we might need to look at a little bit more. Like, I didn't realize people would make one badge and then they would drop off. Was it there, they didn't feel like they were really contributing or was there something that was a disconnect there? With this data, with these statistics, that's what kind of gives you the base to go off of. When you know what the, when you have an idea of where that cut off or what problem there is, then you can actually start making a plan. You can make, you have an idea of what's happening and you can try to fix a problem. Yeah. So, yeah, so the question is, is mirror data available in the Fed message bus for you to view and work with? So, okay, so to get the mirror data into the Fed message bus. Yeah, so uh, if you want mirror data, I think you would, you would want to talk with uh, the infra people because uh, I don't think, uh, Normal people have access to the server. So, uh, uh, as you know, Matt DM said, there, there are no trackers that we use to identify users. So, all we have is specific set of IP addresses. So, uh, obviously, for obvious reasons, we, we cannot give out IP addresses of people, then that would be a problem. So, if, if it's a public IP, then you know, that would be, if it falls into the block. I definitely think there would be ways, because I'm assuming this is like Mirror Manager, right? Is the software for? Yeah. I mean, I think there would definitely be a way to get Fed message integration or some kind of support for collecting data into Mirror Manager. Like Sacha mentioned, we would have to be a little bit careful about what kind of data we're collecting. Um, but I think there would be, a lot of these, are, these are all libraries, like all of these applications in Fedora infrastructure are using the Fed message libraries to uh, to send messages, to emit messages onto the bus. So I, I know it would be possible to probably get, to, I don't know the Mirror Manager project that well, um, but I definitely think it would be possible to at least get some, try to get some kind of meaningful data out of that. And I think that would actually be probably a really valuable place to try to get some data to understand more about our users instead of just our con contributor community too. Specifically, I don't know how to, how to go forward on that, but I know that the, the possibility for integrating it and working with fed message is definitely there. Right, so uh, this is one part of the Percival tool. So this is using Mailbox and HyperKitty. So what it does is it, it pulls all the data from the archives. So, and this is a one-time process, right? So if you pull the data once, it's gonna be archived in your local stash, and you won't have to ever connect to internet again to gather statistics. And this is a good thing because, you know, it's, you're saving bandwidth and you don't put stress on servers like I did on Data Gripper. All right, so uh, these are the stuff you can uh, grab from uh, the mailbox. So it's going to be Unix from. Uh, 
and there's going to be a content type that's it's not really worth to gather statistics on. You have from to subject, you have the body, or if it's a reply, it's in reply to, and then you have the date. So uh, I, I just grab the from a field from the messages, and it looks something like this. So this is just plain text. This is I'm just printing this in Python. So what I can do is I can I can go ahead and I you know store this somewhere. So uh, I will put that in stats cache. I mean, sorry, uh, I'll put that in log stash. And so uh, log stash is this uh, tool like uh, you know stats cache that I mentioned. So it's what it's going to do is it's, it's going to gather all the data and it's going to enrich the data. So let's say I have from and and let's say I have sent five messages. So uh, you know this tool, Percival tool, is not very intelligent to understand uh, these are same. So what it does is it, it puts into log stash, and log stash is gonna categorize stuff together. Let's say uh, I have like messages from Eskamo the Fedora project, so then there are five messages. So that's gonna club it together and it's gonna enrich the data. Yeah, so uh, this is the tool that actually you know you can use to build dashboards from what data we have. So I have added that data in, in into uh, Kibana, and there's this tab called Visualize. So what you will be ideally doing is you will be adding a new visualization after. So I have added all the mailbox data into this. So I can choose what graphs I want. So let's say I want to do a pie chart. And then uh, I'll click on mailbox. So that's the data I added. So the question was, we have all these tools, we have all this data, but what's kind of the next step for where we're going to go with the project for making this into consistent, actionable data that we can make sense out of and try to use to make 
real plans and actions in Fedora. Yes, the thing is, uh, all this while we, we have been using you know a lot of custom metrics. Like we we had a lot of Python scripts to generate data. So that is something we cannot you know actively maintain because it's it's going to be either lost in some Fedora repo or it's it's just not you know reusable, right? So what we are going to do is we are going to uh, take all the FedMessage data and, and we are going to put it into uh, the stack. We are going to use Percival on it. So the long-term plan is you know to write a plugin for Percival that's going to gather all the data. So what you can do is uh, Percival has has this tool called. Uh, No, right now, uh, Percival have uh, support for AskBot. Uh, they can gather data from Git, GitHub, there's HyperKitty, Jira, and stuff like that. So maybe uh, in around uh, five to six months, we'll, we'll have a fat message over there. And yeah, this is all Python. So uh, you can use these things you know, to pull data. So let's say I, I, have, I need to pull data for, uh, let's say, uh, AskBot. So I can just write scripts for this. I can write a plugin for it, and I can put all this data into dashboard, and I can you know, build dashboards on the fly. And uh, let's say I want fat message. We don't have you know, a specific thing for fat message yet, so I'm, you know, I'm planning to contribute to this project uh, and write a fat message plugin for this. So you could do something like uh, uh, Percival uh, space fat message, and then you can specify a category, and it's going to get all the data for that category, and you can build whatever you want on Kibana. Like, as you can see here, I mean, uh, I think the data bridge is not refreshed, and it requires quite a lot of internet. So what it does is you can go here, you can select what you want. So let's say this is like inbox data, and this kind of requests a refresh, but uh, I don't have the bandwidth to do that right now. So this is, you know, uh, this has everything in mailbox. From uh, This is Fedora Join archives from 2014 to 17. So this has all the data. So if you want, you know, let's say data from 2016 to 17, you don't have to write a special script for it. So you're just going to go here, select the dates, and just going to build the graph for you. So we'll have this uh, you know, dashboard uh, you know, probably in our infrastructure. And anyone can go there and build dashboards and share with the community. And just to kind of add on top of that, it's kind of like this, like, so what? Um, you can see like, in, in this tool specifically, it has a lot of support for all of these different hooks and backends that we are already using in Fedora. And it is kind of this big idea that we have all this data and we don't want to ask the ambassadors. We don't want to go to the ambassadors and be like, hey, if you want to have a fancy chart and graph, you can come write your own metric stack for us or, met or your own dashboard for us. Like, we don't want to make it hard for other people to get this information. So part of this goal, like why these tools like Kibana, and you might know other ones like Grafana as well, uh, what they are really great at doing is making sense of what all this data is really doing in a really easy to understand format. Like you can see, you can have all these different kinds of charts. You can have like a pie chart, vertical bar graphs, uh, a gauges, and like there's all these different ways that you can visualize this data and turn it into something that, and you can point anybody to look at and be like, oh, I understand this, this makes sense. This isn't a giant JSON blob file that I can't read. So that's why like, this is part of like, the, the next step of how we're going to get there and do this because it's really taking it from this point where we have all this data and we're writing all these manual reports and it's really hard to kind of bootstrap people into this and it's really confusing. This is kind of this platform where we can start pointing people to and be like, hey, Here's your dashboard for ComOps or for a specific project. Um, it's really kind of the, the next step for how we're going to actually make it easy for anyone in Fedora to make sense of this data. Because it is, like a lot of this right now is like writing your own Python plugins and scripts to pull this data out. And we know like not some people, hey, if you're all if you're all about that, we would love to have you come by ComOps and spend some time with us. But if you're not, we want to try to make that easier for other people in the project to understand. And that's ultimately what the goal of Kibana, of a visualization of dashboards, that's what the big picture of this is. So this is kind of how we're trying to make sense of all this and make it easy to share with the rest of the Fedora community. So that way, you don't have to be the Python wizard to make sense of what's happening in your own sub-project. If that's not 
We want your feedback, but we don't want to make you write Python code. Yeah, actually, we have uh, some people in Comops who are interested in building stuff like this. So uh, there are like three people I'm working with. So we recently built, you know, uh, a graph which would show ambassador locations by activity. So that's something we recently did. So we have people to, you know, work on uh, Python and you know to build the fat message plugin. So maybe next year, uh, Matthew will not, I know, have to write the scripts and run it for 16 hours. He can just go to this dashboard and he can he can pull data out of this. Just definitely, I think an action item that we definitely do have on our plate is to start conversations with people in Fedora infrastructure to start basically the same things that we're detailing now. I, I, I definitely recognize the need that we need to have cross collaboration and pollination on these ideas. Um, so I definitely think that's probably one of our biggest action items right now is to start those conversations and try to uh, get some support from other people in the, in the project community to help us build those tools. So we do have some, we kind of do have some group of people in ComOps working on that, but I would like to try to cross-pollinate it out to infrastructure. Um, so I'd say that's definitely like an action item that we are, it's, it's on the table. Does that answer the question? Cool. There's stuff like uh, goals. I think that's also uh, taken care of by Fedora Hubs. So uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, that's the feature you also have. Let's, let's say we have something like, uh, I, I need to get the badge for making 1,000 wiki edits. And so I, we can have something like how many have made and how many to go. So it's like you are 50 percent the goal. So that, that's. I think it's already there on hubs. I think Cyan is here. So you you have a progress thing, right? Like you have you are like so many messages away from this badge. I saw that in the mockups. It's a very specific. Yeah. Mm. So just to get that clarification too. So for the Grimoire or for the Kibana kind of visualizations, it's more of focusing on the community-wide Fedora project holistic view, whereas there is some support already in Fedora hubs at a more individualistic contributor level, like the example was, I'm this many messages away from getting uh, like a mailman badge, or I'm this many commits away from getting a Peugeot badge. Um, that would be more like the individualistic level, which is what support, or it's in progress for hubs. This is more of like at the holistic big picture view for the entire Fedora project. So does anyone have any other questions or ideas or feedback on metrics or anything that they, you came here, you were like, I really was curious about this, then you didn't hear it answered or you're still wondering about? All right. So I think from this point on, we're kind of gonna go and switch over to a hack session. Um, since there's a decent amount of people in this room, I think it'd be really great to, I don't know how many of you have uh, I mentioned it at the beginning of this session about this Fedora Appreciation Day uh, ticket that we've had for a while. Um, so I, I think that might be one thing that we work on from here on out. And a few other things I, I just need to pull up. We had some, we have an either pad with some of these tickets highlighted. But I think from here it'll be a little bit more, um, I'm gonna go probably gonna kill the video.